In this section, we will learn how amino acids are joined together forming peptide bonds, as well as learn key characteristics about a protein's primary structure. Amino acids are linked together through dehydration synthesis. A key feature of amino acids joining together is that the R groups of the amino acids are not involved in the process. Only the alpha carboxylic acid and the alpha amine functional groups are involved in the peptide bond formation. During this reaction, the amine nitrogen from the downstream amino acid mediates attack on the carbonyl carbon of the carboxylic acid functional group. This leads to the loss of the hydroxyl group from the carboxylic acid and a proton from the amine, resulting in water formation. In reality, the oxygen comes from the carboxylic acid and two hydrogens from the amine functional group, as amino acids typically exist in their Zwitter ionic state at cellular pH. But it's helpful to see the water removal in the deionized state. Some key features of the peptide bond is that it's an amide functional group. The nascent peptide is also always put together in the N to C direction, meaning that the amine of the starting amino acid is on the left hand side and the carboxylic acid of the last amino acid is on the right hand side. This directionality of protein synthesis is created by the action of the ribosome. If we were doing protein synthesis in a test tube, both ends of each amino acid would be reactive and create great difficulty in being able to create a peptide with the desired sequence order. Another key feature that we notice is that the R groups tend to alternate on either side of the peptide in the trans configuration. This is because the R groups are usually quite large and bulky, and if they were on the same side of the growing peptide, they would create too much steric hindrance to be stable. Thus, they are assembled in a more favorable trans conformation. As we've noted in the previous lecture, proline is the one exception to this rule. The cis and trans configurations within the protein structure is created because the amide bond formed during peptide synthesis is planar in nature. This is due to the resonance structure of the amide bond. Because the nitrogen atom has a lone pair of electrons, that lone pair can shift and create a double bond character between the nitrogen and the carbonyl carbon. This would shift electrons up to the oxygen momentarily, creating a charge state of the oxygen. The electronegativity potential of oxygen allows this state to be possible, even though it's not the favored conformation. Recall that double bonds are created using the pi orbitals, and that a molecule cannot rotate freely when they are present. This creates a fixed planar nature of the peptide bond. Note that the resonance structure of the amide bond is also the reason that the amide cannot act as a Lewis base, like free amines can. The lone pair electrons on the nitrogen are not free to act as a proton acceptor. They are committed to the resonance structure and double bond formation with the carbonyl carbon. As you can see from this diagram, most amino acids will adopt the trans conformation to avoid steric hindrance that's created when the R groups are on the same side of the peptide bond. Proline is the notable exception. Because proline forms a cyclic ring structure with the alpha amine group, the trans conformation of this amino acid creates more steric hindrance than the cis conformation. Thus, proline will adopt the cis conformation and commonly result in bends or kinks within the protein structure. Here is a longer peptide sequence. You should study this sequence such that you can identify where one amino acid begins and ends. Where are the amide linkages? Can you identify the end terminal of the peptide? 
This is the starting location of the protein. How about the C-terminal end? The peptide will always be put together in the N to C conformation. And in that respect, can be read like a book. Also notice that each R group is alternating above and below the nascent peptide in the trans conformation. The overall primary structure of the protein is defined by the linear sequence of the amino acids put together in the N to C orientation. Each protein will have a unique ordering of amino acids, creating hundreds of thousands of possibilities. The C terminal of this protein is shown. Cysteine, serine, leucine, and phenylalanine. As noted in the previous talk, cysteine residues are capable of being oxidized to form disulfide bridges. Oftentimes, these disulfide bridges are required for the correct three-dimensional structure of the protein to be created. The insulin peptide hormone is shown in the diagram above. Within this structure, the A and B peptide chains are held together by disulfide bridges. Insulin would lose activity without these critical linkages. Note that the disulfide bond formation is not a spontaneous process. It requires the action of an enzyme to mediate formation. Thus, not all cysteine residues within a protein structure will be involved in a disulfide bond formation. In the next section, we will discuss how repeating structural features arise within the protein to create regional secondary structural features.